Now here, uh, some basics have been given for the equivalent single layer theory. The heterogeneous laminate. Why it is called the heterogeneous laminate? Because we have seen that this laminate is made of lamina one, lamina two, and lamina three. And this complete is called the laminate here. This is laminate. So the material property one, the property of the material would be one here. The different material properties would be there in two. And different material properties would be there in the third lamina. It may be of the metal. It may be of the ceramic materials, and again it may be of any other materials or polymers or any materials maybe. Suppose so. we are having different material properties so along the thickness direction means in suppose we are assuming this as z and it is the total height is h so in the z direction it is varying from 0 to h1 means at this interface the material properties is same that is homogeneous here then again from h1 to h2 the material properties is different and then again h2 to h3 the different So this this is homogeneous within this. This is homogeneous within this layer only. This is homogeneous within this layer. But when it will cross from this interface to this interface, the properties of the material will change. So along this thickness direction, the properties of material will get changed from the interface. Once we enter in this interface, the properties will change. Again, at this interface, the properties will change, and so on. So therefore, we have mentioned here as a heterogeneous. laminate the laminate is heterogeneous lamina is homogeneous when we are talking only about uh, one lamina it is homogeneous within this properties even though uh, at microscopic level it is not but we are making the uh, as we have seen that we have homogenized it with the uh, fibers and matrix in a one uh, or in one sense so we are telling that it is homogeneous in a average sense so this lamina is homogeneous but the laminate is heterogeneous so we have to understand this term laminate is heterogeneous means it is depending upon the position that if we cross this to this the material value would get changed and uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous we know the definition that homogeneous material is independent of the position or the positional independence is there but heterogeneous laminate is one where the material properties depend upon the position that if the x y z coordinate changes so here we are talking about the thickness direction heterogeneity so therefore the z value change the property of the material property will get changed so therefore it is heterogeneous laminate and is treated as a statically equivalent single layer so we are just assuming it making considering it as a single layer one layer only okay so the displacement field x y z we are not taking one two three different lamina but a single lamina and assuming that the dis uh, displacement field would be at the mid plane we are assuming it because we are considering very thin uh, plate structures so therefore we will assume it as a uh, single lamina u of x y z at the mid plane then we will consider the u not which would be the uh, displacements uh, along the mid plane in plane displacements and plus z times the field variables phi or something we will see how we will derive it so in this way we will consider so here the sense is that to make it equivalent single layer so we are considering only one uh, u as a to define the complete uh, displacement in the uh, along the thickness direction of the laminate so therefore it is called it's equivalent uh, single layer having a complex constitutive behavior reducing the three dimensional problem to a two dimensional problem so it will reduce the three dimensional problem to a two dimensional this phi would be in the function of x and y and this the thickness along the thickness direction so we will make it in the sense to make it easy so the equivalent single layer theories are developed by assuming the form of displacement field or the stress field as a linear combination of the unknown functions and the thickness coordinate so what this mean 
that if there is any function i i of x y z then how we will see this may be the displacement field this may be the displacement field or stress field may be any stress field so we can define this function phi i whether it may be the displacement field where i would be goes from 1 to 3 okay so if for the displacement field i would go for 1 to 3 that it may be the u1 if you are talking about the displacements only then we can define it as definition of so ui j equals to 0 to capital n vj phi i of j of x and y okay so further we can expand it so z 0 sorry z 0 into phi 0 so z 0 means z to the power 0 means any power to the 0 means 1 it would be 1 and phi not of xy so it is not power 0 for phi but for z it was the power 0 plus z square z to the power 1 which is linear part and phi 1 of xy plus z to the power 2 phi 2 of xy okay and here it is phi i of xy so for i equals to 1 if we are writing for i equals to 1 then it would be phi 1 phi 1 phi 1 and so on so in this manner we will expand it the functions so now this assumption allow us to treat the stress deformation analysis as a two dimensional problem so based on this assumption the results and their accuracy depends on the ratio of the thickness of the plate so if the thickness of the plate would be less means thin plate then it would give very good results otherwise as the thickness would increase therefore the accuracy will decrease with that okay so now the equivalent single layer derived from the three dimensional elasticity theory making assumptions concerning the kinematics of the deformation or the stress stress through the thickness of the laminate so we will stop here today so equivalent single layer theory uh, we are studied here up to this part and in the next lecture we will study or uh, we will see the detail of classical laminated plate theory how the displacement fields are defined how the displacement field for first order shear deformation is defined and then the displacement fields for uh, we can say third order shear deformation theory or we can say radius basically it is third order shear deformation theory or higher order shear deformation theory refined zigzag theory refined zigzag theory and all so we will study this in the next lecture so till then thank you so here it is written that in a short form that this is phi i of xyz if we are talking that it is at any displacement fields for i equals to 1 suppose we are considering the displacement fields u1 of xyz okay where we we just consider a laminated plate structure this is a laminated plate and if we are going to analyze so this direction we are considering 1 and this direction we are considering 2 and the thickness direction we are considering 3 okay so along the one direction it is u1 then if i equals to 2 this implies that we are talking along the u2 or we say generally v direction which is the function of v of x y z and the third direction that is the transverse direction then i equals to 3 we will put i equals to 3 that is phi 3 then we will talk about w 
of x y z that is u3 from this so this phi i we will relate with the u of i displacement phase okay so here it is expand the expanded form are here written that for i equals to 1 phi 1 of x y z is phi 1 not x y where z not that is the power z to the power 0 that is 1 so the, here we have not written that that is 1 by default so 1 into phi 1 phi 1 not x y plus z to the power 1 phi 1 of 1 x y plus z square phi 1 phi 1 to x y and so on it is expanded up to nth order similarly for i equals to 2 it is expanded and i equals to 3 so we can say that this function is u1 of x y z this is u2 or we can say v of x y z the function and this is u3 or w or f x y z okay so for nth order expansion it is written here now we can write it in the displacement form also that u1 may be written as u0 plus z1 u1 plus z square u2 plus so on zn So here we can also write it u1 of 1, u1 of 2, u1 of n in this manner. 